Hey guys, it's Kay. Hope you're all well, and that you're all doing your bit to stop this pandemic spreading. Now, like you all, I've got a bit of spare time, and recently I noticed Ubuntu have released a new version, 20.04. Now this is a beta version, and the official launch of Ubuntu version 20 is towards the end of the month. But anyway, I thought I'd try this out and bring you along on the journey. As usual, all links for downloads are in the description below. Okay, so if we scroll down to pre-install server image, I'm going to download the 64-bit version. And this can take up to 5 minutes depending on the speed of your network. So once that's downloaded, I'm going to open up my Pi Imager. And as you can see, we've got Ubuntu already on there, but there's no version 20. So the first thing we do is format our SD card to make sure we get a clean install. Then we select our SD card to format. And finally select write. Now once that's done, we select our image by using use custom ROM and select the image we downloaded earlier. And again, we choose the SD card we want to write onto. And finally, we click write. Once that's completed, just click continue and eject the card. And we place it into our Raspberry Pi and boot up. So on the first boot up, you'll be asked to change your password to your user account and retype it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is sudo apt update, and then once that's done, we're going to sudo apt upgrade. Next, we type reboot, and it should reboot into the Windows environment. Click on Ubuntu user and type in your password, and you're in. And as it says, we can install new software using the software app. I must say, I'm liking the new desktop with the cat theme. Now, this cat is actually called a Fossa cat, and it's a namesake of the new version of Ubuntu. So the most visible difference in version 20.04 is that you are running a newer desktop, the GNOME 3.36. Okay, on the menu bar we've got shortcuts to Firefox, Thunderbird Mail, File Explorer, Rhythmbox, you've got Libra Writer, and we've got Help. And if we click on Show Apps at the bottom left, the apps pop up as normal. Now I must say this feels a lot more snappier than the previous version. Now apparently in this new version, WireGuard VPN service support has been added. Now if you can't see the service already added, you can add it manually by typing the following command. Also the default theme gets an easy to access do not disturb toggle. So on the top right we have quick access to our Wi-Fi, our settings, our lock and power on and off. And taking a quick look at the Mozilla browser, it's quick and snappy. It's amazing how far we've come, it's almost like using a desktop browser. So in all guys, it's a good little upgrade. And you don't have to use the GNOME version of the desktop. Other options range from Kubuntu, Plasma Desktop, uh, Lubuntu the lightweight version, Budgie, Kylin. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like and maybe even a subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.